Leaked intelligence reveals that there are already British troops in Ukraine fighting against Russia, with Putin saying that he is willing to retaliate even up to the point of using nuclear weapons. Why are the West continuing to provoke Russia in an outrageous game of nuclear Russian roulette? I mean, Russian roulette's bad if it's just one person and a gun, isn't it? Like, not everyone and missiles. <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom. Remember, you can support our content by clicking the link in the description, becoming a member of our movement, getting an additional video every single week, and participating in conversations with vital thinkers like Mike Benz, who's got a lot of information on the deep state. We're talking to him this week. You can join and ask your own questions, as well as getting access to additional videos like ones we're doing on replacement theory. That great idea that the left say is a conspiracy and the right say is a reality. We're going to have a conversation about that, but only for our members. And hopefully our members will be among those that survive Armageddon that seems to be approaching. We've heard again and again that Russia's attack on Ukraine was unprovoked. Russia's unprovoked. Unprovoked. Unprovoked attack. Unprovoked. Unprovoked aggression. But we've recently heard that there are CIA bases in Ukraine and have been for the last 10 years and they've been engaging in espionage and sabotage over there. Now we know because of leaked intelligence that Britain have got troops in Ukraine. That means our army that we're paying for, if you're a British person like me, are in Ukraine engaging in military activity against Russia. That is sort of a war, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> At what point does this not become, you know, support Ukraine in terms of morale and taking in refugees and supporting them against that tyrant that is Putin? So, what is this game of Russian roulette about? With Macron saying that it's possible that France will commit troops. With the USA saying they would never commit troops, but billions of dollars of aid sort of seemingly every month being committed to this when it's a very unpopular war, as most of the current wars are with the American public. And now Brits actually having troops, as they say, booties on the ground in Ukraine. What is with all these boots on the ground? Are we not being mindful enough about what this could actually lead to? And are you, as a member of the public, a citizen of Earth, committed to the idea that you want to get involved in a nuclear conflict with Vladimir Putin's Russia? Let's have a look at the legacy media reporting on it, Putin's clear indications that he would engage in it, and study the important fact that for a while, about two years ago, when this conflict was starting, Joe Biden explicitly and expressly said, we would not involve NATO in direct conflict with Russia. Why? That would be World War Three, for Christ's sake. I think that's a literal verbatim quote. It's certainly close to it. We will not fight a war against Russia in Ukraine. Direct confrontation between NATO and Russia is World War Three. So what's changed? Why are they now saying that Putin's bluffing? Let's get into it. Vladimir Putin has warned NATO countries they risk nuclear war if they send troops to Ukraine. Yeah, but what if he doesn't mean it? God, then we'd look really stupid if we retreated and he didn't mean nuclear war. Yeah, but what if he does mean it and we don't retreat and then there is a nuclear war? This is not a low consequence, low stakes gamble. This is not a low risk situation. This is we're gambling with the future of our planet. Seems like literally the highest consequence risk that there could be. Putin told Russians in his speech that he would be stationing more soldiers in Russia's west, close to new NATO members, Finland and Sweden. Now, Putin's nuclear warning comes after France's president refused to rule out the possibility of Western nations sending troops to Ukraine. That's a definite change in position, is it? Because at the beginning of this conflict, well, there's no way NATO countries would send troops. That would mean World War Three for Christ's sake. Now, Macron, the mad globalist haircut, is refusing to, well, we might do, we may do. Don't provoke bloody Vladimir Putin, who has a nuclear arsenal, who's explicitly warned you that he will engage in nuclear war, just on the vague hope that, oh, well, what if he doesn't mean it? That doesn't seem reassuring, does it? Does it? There is no consensus right now about sending in ground troops. Perhaps you should seek a consensus. Perhaps you should ask the French public, who are continually ignored when they protest on the streets, or the farmers that are continually protesting. How dare they even purport to speak for their nations anymore when there's this evident detachment from the leadership and managerial classes and the populations of those countries. And for good reason, because they're saying rather glib, cavalier things like, hey, yeah, maybe we will have a nuclear war with Russia, when most people don't want a nuclear war with Russia. 
Russia. Sending in ground troops in an official, endorsed and sanctioned manner. The words there is no plan to have boots on the ground in an endorsed and official capacity is a tacit acknowledgement that there could be boots on the ground in an unendorsed capacity like our nation. No one's asked the British people, do you want to get in a war with Russia? Because if you did, guess what they'd say? No thanks. I'd rather actually that all that money that's been spent was used to sort our health service and our infrastructure and our way of life rather than annihilating Ukraine and Russia, making food prices shoot up and energy prices shoot up. That's what happened. No one's asking. No one cares. The current engagement in this ongoing act of provocation is without the sanctioning or consent of the nations involved in it. That's the truth. The New York Times revealed, as part of obviously some sort of sanctioned deal with the government, we've got our bases there for the last 10 years in order to continue to facilitate funding. It's been revealed, or it seems obvious. But you and me don't want a war with Russia. They seem to not care. Nothing's ruled out, the exact words of Macron. So who's this war for? But in reality, nothing should be ruled out. In reality, some things should be ruled out. I'd like to rule out nuclear war. That statement from Donald Trump would be like, what the hell, wouldn't it? That's how that would be reported by the rationalist, materialist, global legacy media. But from Macron, it's like, well, of course, nothing is ruled out. Oh, what a lovely accent. We will do whatever it takes to ensure that Russia cannot win this war. Here's some of what Putin said. Nobody is allowed to interfere in our domestic affairs. I don't think you can undermine Vladimir Putin and this nuclear threat by using a comedically poor translator. You're really getting on my nerves now with these booties on the ground. You're going to be in a lot of trouble, I'll tell you that. If NATO keep mucking me about, there's going to be a lot of bother. There's no need to be sarcastic. They should eventually understand that we also have weapons, and they know it. I just said it now myself. Weapons that can hit targets on their territory. We can't bring you this content without the support of our partners. And in this instance, it's a very appropriate partner because you're an awakened wonder and you know that there's every possibility that your communications are being spied on. People are listening in on your private conversations. I say people, I mean government agencies and government funded private agencies that are used as proxies to crush dissent. You've been watching this show for a while. You know that these Orwellian authorities, although Orwell himself was pretty interested in freedom, are spying on us and they'll do whatever it takes to control the narrative by controlling our connection. That's why we've partnered with Freedom Chat, a private messaging app that allows us to text who we want without fear of the tyrannical authorities listening listening into our conversations. This is the app that we trust to keep our data and our conversations private. Freedom Chat has true end-to-end -end encryption, no storage of messages on their servers, and no commercial use of user data, meaning they won't sell your data for political gain or monetary benefit. With Freedom Chat, you can disable screenshots, deactivate your phone's camera and microphone via the sensors off feature, and you can even prevent other individuals in a chat from saving your images or videos to their device without your explicit permission. Excellent. You know it and I know it. The establishment is watching us right now and our conversations. Stay free and protect your privacy with Freedom Chat. Go download the app right now by simply scanning the QR code, this QR code that you're looking at, or visit freedomchat.com forward slash brand. Download it. It's brilliant. Let's get back to it. Everything that the West is coming up with now, what they threaten the world with, it can result in a conflict with the use of nuclear weapons and therefore the destruction of civilization. Small price to pay for acting hard in an international conflict. Annihilation of the planet. Ooh, you're hard showing off. German Air Force officers have been caught spruiking on, or speaking I should say. <laughs> Hmm, OK, well, I don't feel as confident listening to you anymore because you've just said spruiking instead of speaking. This is, of course, the information that there are indeed British troops inside Ukraine has been leaked because of the interception of some German intelligence that's revealed the Brits already have troops inside Ukraine. So add that to the 2014 coup, the CIA bases and agents in Ukraine for the last 10 years. You can now add that the Brits have got soldiers, military inside Ukraine right now. So the word unprovoked is becoming less and less useful and less and less accurate. And the words nuclear Armageddon are becoming more and more relevant. On an encrypted call about UK military activities in Ukraine. 
Officials in Moscow are demanding an explanation. I say don't give them one. Fuck them. Listen, mate, it's a nuclear Armageddon. I don't know if we're sprecking the same language. In Ukraine, there are a few constants. The war dragging on. It's weird, isn't it? Like the war dragging on, like it's an independent thing, like it's a weather condition. We are funding that war. Vladimir Putin's telling you what the conditions are for a ceasefire. In that interview with Tucker, everyone tried to turn into like the world's worst bloody thing. And we're continually claiming that this is sort of a one sided battle in so much as it's an unprovoked aggressor engaging in unwarranted military activity. What we know now is, is there was a peace deal on the table, and due to Boris Johnson's intervention, that was all scuppered. We knew that prior to the Putin interview. President Putin. Putin sent a draft treaty that they wanted NATO to sign to promise no more NATO enlargement. That was a precondition for not invade Ukraine. Of course, we didn't sign that. The opposite happened. Now we really, really know it. So it's not like it's just going, oh, there's nothing you can do. It's like the seasons. It's one of those things, death and taxes and an inevitable ongoing war that keeps being funded by you. So don't pretend that it's like a natural phenomena. It's a constructed event. And Western nations debating just how deeply they should get involved. As well, even the idea that it's intervention that we're discussing. We've already intervened. It wouldn't be happening if we weren't funding it, hadn't scuppered the peace deal, didn't have bases inside of Ukraine, hadn't engaged in delegitimizing the elected government in 2014 and replacing them in a CIA-sponsored coup. How deeply should we get involved? Stop being involved! That's why senior figures from the German military were talking last month, a conversation recorded, now broadcast, by Russia. Among the claims made that Britain has troops deployed in Ukraine to help set up missiles with so-called reach-back intelligence. In terms of mission planning, I know how the British do it. They do it with reach-back. They also have a few people on the ground. And also claims of fresh plans for an attack on this, the Kerch Bridge, that links Russia with Crimea. It's been targeted twice already, but has survived each time. We've looked at the bridge extensively. Unfortunately, because of its size, it's like an airfield. It's possible that you'd need 10 or 20 missiles for it. And now for some deeper analysis from those capitalist right-wing pigs at the World Socialist Organization. Confronted with the deterioration of Ukraine's military position and significant advances by Russian forces, the NATO powers are publicly threatening a massive escalation of the war involving the direct deployment of NATO combat troops on Ukrainian territory and attacks on Russian infrastructure and cities, which seems to be already happening, actually. Last week, members of the governments of four NATO member countries, France, Canada, the Netherlands and Lithuania, stated that they were considering sending combat troops to fight Russia in Ukraine. Then, on Friday, Russian media outlets published a leaked discussion among German military leaders discussing the use of German long-range weapons to strike Crimea. In the midst of these developments, the UK government admitted to having deployed a small number of troops to Ukraine. Oh, barely any. Barely anything at all. We only blew up a little bridge. They were all fussed about it. This is a tiny nuclear missile, and we're all just dying of radiation burns. Oh no, what fuss is about? The reckless escalation of the war is being carried out without any public explanation of what NATO is planning, let alone a frank acknowledgement of the potentially catastrophic consequences of the deployment of forces in Ukraine and attacks on Russia. Notice how consistent the theme of concealed or withheld information is, or the ability to judge as misinformation or malinformation true data that is inconvenient. Convenient. Note the assumption that you aren't consulted on how your country is run. Even when it comes to events that could lead to a nuclear apocalypse, it's seen as something that you wouldn't understand this. You'd make terrible decisions. Well, what about your decisions to escalate a conflict which just a couple of years ago you said you would not escalate because that would be World War Three? What has significantly changed? Why are we not being informed? Why are we funding this? Does this seem to you like the kind of relationship you want with the powerful? And meaningfully, how different is it from the kind of various other forms of regulation and rule that we are said to have left behind? Feudalism, rule by monarchy, rule by colonialism. If when it comes to matters that could lead to a nuclear apocalypse, you're not consulted, you don't get to vote. But notice in your country, are either of the sides saying, we're not going to have a war with Russia, we're going to insist there's a diplomatic solution? Because there's of elections in 2024, you'd think one of the subjects worth discussing might be whether or not we want a nuclear war. I don't know. I recognise there are a lot of cultural issues, a lot of economic issues, a lot of energy issues, a lot of things to discuss. But ranking them, I would say nuclear Armageddon, what's 
more important than that, Universal Armageddon, dismissing the explicit warning made by Putin during the past week that direct intervention by NATO forces into Ukraine could lead to the use of nuclear weapons. NATO leaders and the media are laughing off the danger with claims that the Russian president is merely bluffing. Fingers crossed, eh? And to prove I'm not bluffing, watch this. Maybe it just collapsed on its own. We can't take that chance. You always say that. I want to take a chance. There is no justification for such complacency. The Biden administration and its European allies are engaged in a staggeringly reckless game of nuclear Russian roulette. Yes, I can't imagine a rational, circumspect and reasonable game of nuclear Russian roulette. Apparently forgetting their own earlier statements made at the start of the war in February 2022 that direct intervention by NATO would mean World War III, the imperialist leaders now assert that Russia will not retaliate even if its territory is directly attacked. On what basis? And I base that on absolutely nothing. Moreover, even if there exists the possibility of a massive counterattack, they insist that NATO must not be deterred by that danger. Well, I would say do be deterred by that danger. And I'd like to see the evidence that, oh, look, we know for a fact that they're just not going to see. Of course, the evidence seems to suggest, and exhibit A, Vladimir Putin saying, if you attack us, if this continues, if you get involved, we are willing to use long range weapons that will be like in your yard. We're bringing this to your hood. What have you got that counters that? I've got a little thing called a hunch. A little thing that called a hunch has been rather forgotten in international diplomacy when dealing with a nuclear power. You may have Vladimir Putin himself saying, I will engage in a nuclear war. But what about the old hunch, eh? Are you dismissing the hunch? Yeah, I'm dismissing the hunch. Hunch. There's your murderer. How do you know? Eh, something about his hair. I don't know. How did we miss that? Get him! An argument that is being made by the media and by think tanks is that it's been a mistake for NATO to indicate any concern about the Ukraine war escalating toward a nuclear exchange with Russia. They're kind of a bit like acting like you don't fancy someone in order to attract them or pretending to be tougher than you are in a schoolyard scrap. Isn't the degree of sophistication I expect from these organisations like NATO and the CIA and the government of the United States of America and the government of the UK who when they're sort of deciding what information we get access to is we're actually extremely intelligent people we cannot allow you to decide for yourself whether or not this medication is good for you or whether or not this war is good for you because we're pretty clued on oh no you got cooties ah they're operating like children <laughs> bowing to putin's nuclear blackmail will make nuclear war more likely <laughs> what ah oh, you see that's exactly what he wants is for you to bow to his nuclear blackmail. That's what I reckon anyway, based on the old hunch. I don't want to base my children's future and the future of the planet and all of potential future humanity on your hunch. That's where you're wrong. It's the hunch, you see. That's the hunch that's got Putin on the back foot. Bowing to Putin's nuclear blackmail will make nuclear war more likely. Peter Dickinson of the Atlantic Council, a US-based think tank wrote, the Atlantic Council is funded by the weapons industry. They're not all in it thinking, hmm, hmm, what should we think? Think now. You'll think what we fucking well pay you to think. That's what they think in there. Look at its funding. Ukraine has repeatedly called Putin's bluff, exposing the emptiness of the Russian dictator's nuclear bluster. <laughs> well, that's just because he's not done a nuclear war yet. He won't ever do one. He's not been in this position before. This is an escalating conflict. Well, do you think there's nothing? I think there's nothing that would make Vladimir Putin go, do you know what? I've had enough of this now. Well, I hope you're right. Ukraine has repeatedly called Putin's bluff, exposing the emptiness of the Russian dictator's nuclear bluster. He declared, adding, while Ukraine has refused to be intimidated by Putin's nuclear blackmail, the same cannot be said for the West. Western fear of escalation is the single biggest obstacle. There are different types of fear, I was taught. There is neurotic fear that can never be satiated and wisdom fear, which is a gift that helps us to discern the boundaries of the physical world, like we live in a physical world where there are physical threats. It's somewhat neurotic to be terrified of sharks if you live, you know, in a busy metropolis. But if you swim about in the sea with chum and meat dangling from your bikini, fear of sharks is considered wisdom fear. Although hanging chum off a bikini in anybody's language, I think is odd. But in diplomacy terms, sort of what we're actually doing. <laughs> fingers are crossed though. My fingers were crossed. Yeah, that doesn't stop nuclear attack. Oh no! In Germany, the Frankfurter Alemane Zeitung wrote that Russia's threat to use nuclear weapons will not be realised, it continued. Not even if, as happens regularly, American and British missiles and cruise missiles are used to attack military targets in the Ukrainian territories annexed by Russia, including Crimea. Oh well, let's just 
Hope you're right about that because Vladimir Putin is saying the opposite. The Lowy Institute, a pro-NATO think tank in Australia. Oh, already, they're a pro-NATO think tank. NATO probably give them money or similar agencies or subdivisions or affiliated organisations give money. So like, you don't even need to know, but, you know, just let's indulge them. Let's see what this pro-NATO think tank think. Tank. We think tanks in our think tank. We think missiles in our think tank. They all just think things that are beneficial to the weapons industry. I wonder who funds them. The Lowy Institute, a pro-NATO think tank tank in Australia declared, the key question is whether the West will call Putin's bluff or yield to his high stakes nuclear posturing, a decision that will shape the outcome of the conflict. How about this shape? That's the shape of us all dying in a nuclear war, for those of you just listening to the audio. By publicly claiming that Putin is only bluffing, NATO is all but inciting him to react aggressively and expose his miscalculation. There's a football hooligan song that was popular in the 80s, not so much now, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. I mean, if that's Leeds fans to West Ham or Chelsea fans, it's considered to be working class culture out of control and in need of radical regulation. But when it's entire governments and the NATO organisation saying it to Vladimir Putin, it's called geopolitical strategy. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Even as they loudly assert that Russia will not respond, US and European strategists have gamed out the possibility of an escalation to nuclear war. That's not game. Nuclear war's not a game. The New York Times began publishing a series of extraordinary opinion pieces Sunday under the overall headline, At the Brink, focused on the threat of nuclear weapons in an unstable world. Hello, welcome to At the Brink. This week on At the Brink, we're all gonna be living in a nuclear apocalypse. Hooray! How like the New York Times, who plainly operate on behest of the deep state, given the, the access they were given to those CIA bases, given the way they were willing to put that story out there in order to generate compliance from the Republican Party in order to receive further funding for the perpetuation of this ongoing war. To consider, like, at the brink, there's a sort of think piece. Let's get Malcolm Gladwell in to write about the brink. Well, the thing is, the brink's not where you think it is. You can get a lot closer to that brink than you think. We've got a think tank about brinks, and I think that the brink don't stink. It's not Dr. Seuss, it's Vladimir Putin. One thing you say for the New York Times is they are catering for both audiences. On one hand, we should definitely call Vladimir Putin's bluff. But what if, oh no, that's a good point. How to survive a nuclear winter? Nuclear sweaters? Nuclear bobble hats? Also like Trump is like continually like, my God, if Trump gets in, he'll make himself president for life. Meanwhile, fuck you, Putin. Yeah, come on, come on, Putin. <laughs> come on, have a go if you think you're not enough. The project's lead writer, W.J. Hennigan, initiated the series with a column, The Brink, which begins by stating, If it seems alarmist to anticipate the horrifying aftermath of a nuclear attack, consider this. United States and Ukraine governments have been planning for this scenario for at least two years. That doesn't make it better that makes it worse. Don't worry about the nuclear aftermath. We've been planning for it. And tell us the plan. All rich people have already got bunkers. Zuckerberg's got a great one. Jeff Bezos is, is fantastic. Good luck in the nuclear dust, motherfuckers! Wait, wait, what? That, that's the plan? Yeah, don't vote Trump. He's crazy. See ya! In the fall of 2022, Hennigan writes, a US intelligence assessment put the odds at 50-50 that Russia... 50-50? Like, when that comes up in a game show for, like, to get a caravan or an RV, I'm like, ooh, careful. You might... <laughs> Lose out on the 500 bucks you've already got. It's a nuclear war. Ah, come on, go for it, you goddamn pussy. 50 50. 50 50. They might or they might not that Russia would launch a nuclear strike to halt Ukrainian forces if they breached its defense of Crimea. Hennigan adds that earlier, the Biden administration had directed a small group of experts and strategists, a tiger team. That's going to be helpful. A tiger team as a nuclear missile explodes. They're great. Go where everybody knows your name. They're great. To devise a new nuclear playbook of contingency plans and responses. Now, in the event that there is a nuclear war, I propose. <laughs> Sorry, what were you? <laughs> not understood the dynamic. The NATO powers have repeatedly stated that they will not be deterred from pursuing the war by the threat of a nuclear exchange. We'd be playing right into their hands. The deliberate use of tactical and strategic nuclear weapons. Fucking hell. I mean, it's just like that is not tactical, is it? That's... 
that's not a tactic. Nuclear weapons, which was rejected for decades as synonymous with madness, is now being normalized as a legitimate component of imperialist geopolitical strategy. You know that feeling that you have that the elites live in a different world from you? It might be that they were able to have parties during the pandemic or just the obvious wealth inequality and the bunkers or whatever. Now that's reached the point where a nuclear war evidently affects them differently than it affects everyone else. And some of those loopy theories about population control or people saying they want a hot war with Russia don't seem so conspiratorial when there's been two years of planning and brinkmanship is considered a strategy. Does it? The war is being driven to a much larger and bloodier scale. All of this is being done behind the backs of the population. Always a good sign. Relying on a lack of information and disinformation. On Monday, the German state blatantly lied, stating that an emergency summons of the German ambassador to the Russian foreign ministry had nothing to do with the leaked discussions about German missiles targeting Crimea. That meeting with the Russian ambassador was to organize a party for your birthday and you ruined it! You're just like your Führer! Cheers. The ruling class is lying to the public because it wants to be free to carry out its military conspiracies unimpeded. Yes, there is already broad opposition to the escalation of the war. After Macron raised the possibility of sending European troops to fight Russia and Ukraine, polls found that 68% of the French people and 80% of the German people oppose it. Yeah, because people don't want to die. That's the main aim in the game of life. To the extent that masses of people in the US and all of the NATO countries are aware of what is happening, this opposition will grow. That's why the control of information becomes so significant. Because when the strategy is Vladimir Putin might not launch nuclear weapons, you have to keep control on the information. That's why everyone went hysterical about Tucker talking to Vladimir Putin. How dare you? How dare you? That is disloyal. It's borderline treason. No, what's treason is having hunches up against explicit threats of nuclear war and claiming that that's a strategy simply because in reality there's an elite set of institutions that are somehow immune from nuclear war in ways that I can't really begin to understand because I thought that was one area where we were kind of actually were all in it together. Evidently not. You know what I'm in the mood for? Could it be Turkey? But how did you... So, it seems to me that we should demand freedom of information. We should demand the ability to determine for ourselves the activities of our nations on the international stage. And we should demand a diplomatic solution between Ukraine and Russia, simply to be sure that it's not an exercise like Afghanistan was and Iraq was to perpetuate war in order to generate profits and dominion or to drain an international energy of their resources in order to create a unipolar globalist state. Because I don't know that we're going to benefit from the same things that they benefit from when we suffer as a result result of their decisions. Things to them that are beneficial are not beneficial to us. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and chat. Remember, click the link in the description, get an additional video each week. This week on displacement theory, controversial. And join us for conversations with people like Mike Benz and put your questions to them. The man who says democracy is not electoral anymore. It's the protection of a set of institutions. Join us for that conversation and so much more by becoming a member of our movement. In the meantime, if you can, stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content, where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.